And what the last thing he wants you to understand is who the original people are and why the original people are and where the original people are and when the original people came. None of that will they teach you. This is Dr. Delbert Blair. We featured him before on this channel, looking at how the presence of melanin in the body turns you into a god. In this excerpt today, we take a look at three black histories that will be erased, hidden, and forgotten. I did promise that I wanted to go over a few things about black history, but this is present history that will be black history in the future when you understand later on when that satellite went down, they won't tell you it's because of energy coming out of Africa that is coming up now into space and beginning to disturb everything that's running on electricity. Another statement I want to make, electricity is slowed down magnetism. Above electricity and magnetism is what is called organ energy. Now those are bad words. You don't want to say organ out here to this government and research scientists because organ means original. It's organic. It's orgasm. It's organic. It's organic people. And of course they refer to those kind of people as original people. But you do hear a word that's used a lot, it's called aboriginal. Never use that word aboriginal if you are indigenous to the planet. Why? Because it means to abhor the original person. Aboriginal means to abhor the original. To abhor means to hate, to envy, to covet, to dislike. Consequently, the word aboriginal means that you're a, you, know, you have a dislike for the original person. And the original person, of course, is a person with melanin. It's been proven so many times now that if necessary, I won't spend the time with an audience like you to go into that, but nevertheless. Let me first of all say that when you see Obama, you're seeing Alexander Hamilton. Raise your hand if you remember anything at all about Alexander Hamilton. Let me just see your audience here if I can. Anything about Alexander? That's a few of you, not many. Alexander Hamilton was Secretary of the Treasury back in the 1700s, and Alexander Hamilton was a black man. Now, when you read the history books, he was Secretary of the Treasurer, and if you see on your $10 bill, you see a Caucasian-looking Caucasian person with long, flowing hair, and so on and so forth. Actually, Alexander Hamilton looked much like Brother Obama to be his brother. And I have a picture which you can't appreciate from here, and I didn't bring my slides. I didn't do that. I didn't know I had a privilege again. But you will see, and I'll try to make some copies before I leave town if possible. If not, you can write to our center and give it. This is a picture on your, be your right, of Obama, or I'm sorry, Alexander Hamilton, and a picture of Alexander Hamilton as they want you to think he looked. And if you look at him as he actually looked, you will see he looks so much like Obama, it's a shame. And Obama, no, I'm sorry, Hamilton was killed in a duel with Aaron Burr. The real reason was because they didn't like him because he was controlling the currency, trying to set the United States back on a gold standard had a lot of influence in politics and was going nation over the seas and many people were respecting him. Consequently, they offed him, spoke with a jewel over a woman. And this is the one of that one. The same thing could happen again in history if it goes away because they look too much alike. Nobody's made that comparison and it just opens up the box for many other comparisons too. We've already had six black presidents. Seven if you include John Hanson who was president before George Washington, so when you're teaching in school that the first president of the United States was George Washington, that's a big lie. He was president of the Continental Congress, and this is when the indigenous people here were teaching them how to run a country, and one of the most indigenous people they could find, of course, was John Hanson, who was re-elected twice, which means if you want to say he served two terms, you can almost say we had a president before George Washington that was black two times. There were seven people elected during that particular time. All of that has been raced out of history, and therefore we start off with the first lie and make no more that the first president of the United States of America was George Washington. It was not under the Constitutional Congress. It was John Hanson. Black presidents. Now, while a lot of people associate Barack Obama as the first president of America who was black, 
Dr. Delbert Blair reminds us of a few other past presidents of America who trace their origins to indigenous black people. He dives extensively by giving examples such as Abraham Lincoln, why he was killed, his skin texture, and maternal parents. But even in so, when we're now looking at at least talking about presidents again, we've had seven, if you're going to include John Hanson, six, if you're not going to include him. One was Thomas Jefferson. He was part Indian. He really knew this and never denied it too much again. And of course, his wife really, without marrying her, was Sally Hemmons. And if you read about the whole story of Sally Hemmons and what happened there and how, again, they, they were lovers on a slide, on a side, if you will, that takes care of it. It could go much deeper than I do on the tapes. Another was Warren Gamil Harding. And Warren Harding, of course, uh, also had a wife on the side called Dora Wilburn. His great-grandmother, I'm sorry, his mother was Elizabeth Harding. I'm sorry, his mother was Elizabeth Madding until she married a Harding. She was already, again, a mulatto, if you want to call it. And his great-grandmother was Elizabeth Harding herself. So you had Elizabeth Madison and Elizabeth Harding. One of the books by J.E. Rogers, a person who was supposed to be unlettered, and I learned more from him than I did from most of the professors that chose to teach me black history. And this is a picture, although you can't see it from there. It shows, again, Warren Harding's father, and you can see he's a very definite black man. Warren Gamil Harding, of course, then was a black president. If you want to say Negro, I can't deal with that either because I don't know what a Negro is. So consequently, we just say he was a person of African ancestry or at least a person who had melanated blood, if you would. We also get into Calvin Coolidge. Nobody likes to talk with that one too much, but he was an indigenous. He was part Blackfoot and part Cherokee, and many said say that he was part of the Menominee tribe. Well, the reason why they say Menominee, that's just a way of evading it, is because amongst the Menominee, you can get somebody looking as white as white all the way down as black and black. The Menominee are mixed indigenous people. How they got that way is a long story. That's very metaphysical. But that's what you can find amongst the Menominee. You're really just saying, well, I don't know, so therefore we'll give him a title of that. And of course, their names are not Indians because Columbus uh, thought that he went to India. So even the people, and I've taught at the, some of the American Indian school there for a while, it's another one of the things the Creator has had me to do, they don't even know what to call themselves. They still call themselves Indians. They were never called Indians. They were called by the tribe they were, or indigenous. And as I say again, never confuse indigenous with aboriginal. Andrew Jackson was the hardest one I had in trying to research. I'd heard rumors through J.A. Rogers and other scholars that I went to school with. So I did to do, uh, I got on the radio and almost got in trouble with that one, so it made me just study some more. I don't give up easily. I'm pretty tenacious once I get the scent. And I had the scent there. So what I found out was that Andrew Jackson was born on the Crawford Farm, 14, um, sorry, uh, which was in Virginia, and he was born 14 months after his father died. There were no white men on the farm, and his oldest brother, Hamilton, was sold as a slave, which later on he had to free. Both had the same mother and supposedly the same father. But then I did even more research because they got on my case about it, and I found out that in Ireland he was part of the area where the black Celt live, the black Irish. Black Irish are just that. They're very dark-skinned, they live near the water area again, and they're called Black Irish because of that. So I have to definitely include him now, and I don't back off of that. Another, of course, was Abraham Lincoln. And, of course, the famous thing, uh, freeing a slave was say, like, you and by God, freed the slaves. Well, he should have been because he was one. In fact, the swarthy texture of his skin, which simply means colored rather than texture, there were people who served him as servants who were lighter in complexion than, Alex, I'm sorry, than um, Abraham Lincoln was. One of the reasons he was assassinated was because he was black, but that's not the only reason. He tried to set the United States back on the gold standard. Kennedy made the same mistake because of what they call the globalist in the Federal Reserve. You just don't do that, but that's another whole story. Abraham Lincoln's father, who was Thomas Lincoln, had married Nancy Hank, and Nancy Hanks's father was a black man, mother was a white woman, but therefore automatically he had to be part black or part African or swarthy complexion, whatever you would. 
Her mother was Lucy Hanks. Pictures of Lucy Hanks are everywhere. No doubt his mother and his grandmother were both black people, black women. The last one that I want to deal with is Dwight David Eisenhower. And Dwight David Eisenhower, who warned us about the militia takeover and told you about the industrial complex and better watch it again, he should very well know. Dwight David Eisenhower when, uh, married a woman while well, his mother, he was Dwight David Eisenhower. David Eisenhower was his father. Dwight was him. Dwight had married what they called the Aleutian Brethren. These were a group of people who believed in interracial marriage because of religion that all people should be one. And I have pictures of that. I didn't bring it. I don't like to travel with stuff nowadays. I get stopped almost everywhere I go. So that's one that will stay there. I would have brought a replicate, but I said no, I didn't. But that can be gotten again through our website or if you want to contact the medicine itself. Pyramids. Dr. Delbert Blair then dives into the 18th century Egypt, those who ruled Egypt then, and what was the real purpose of the pyramids. 18th dynasty Egypt, which is one that everybody should remember because that was the last time when extraterrestrials and terrestrials mated and ruled a kingdom over in Egypt. That's what the Great Pyramids were based about too. They've told you all wrong on the Great Pyramids until recently because they told you it was a burial place and there's not one pyramid over in the Giza Plateau that was ancient that was ever used as a burial ground. You've had some lesser kings that tried to emulate that and it was buried there. It was not. It was a generators. It was the Oregon Energy Generators. And that's why they're coming active again. If you've been over there recently, you'll find out there's a humming and a beat in the ground around there. The first thing you have to adapt to when you now go into modern Egypt is staying asleep at night with that boom, 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 boom. It's like a humming going on there. If you remember, Anwar uh, Sawas over there, who is a curator, has built a wall around some of that area because they're still doing research now because they don't want you to understand the following thing. Granite structures, which contain piezoelectricity, and pyramids around the earth now are beginning to give off a resonant, a hum, a vibration. They're tuning into the new planetary vibration, and they don't want you to understand that. That's why now crystals are hard to get. Try to get some good crystals nowadays, big ones, and watch what you have to go through, especially if you get a bunch of them, because they now can generate that new energy, which can be very helpful to you if you understand how to use them, and they don't want you to know it. But granite, pyramid-shaped structures around our Earth are beginning to give off a humming, vibrational resonance, Birds can hear it, animals can hear it, you can hear it too if you have melanin, and if you can get the drugs out of your system, you begin to feel it. Also, people now that have melanin can feel a tension and a higher vibration. It's like an uneasiness that's going on. People say, well, can't you sense it? Well, if you don't have melanin, it's hard to sense anything. This is where the problem comes in. We have a people who are senseless when it comes to spirituality, trying to direct you, or spiritual people having a hard time with their reality. It's a matter of what you think is real, and what is a fact of what is real? Religion. Speaking of religion, Dr. Blair points that there are 13 people who led religions around this planet, except the Christian religion. Why that is so is up to us to find out. When you look at the history books about religion, you will find that there have been 13 people who have led religions around this planet all of them black except the one that heads the Christian religion. Isn't that a statement? But it's true. All of them black. Some of the titles that they're given even means black, which is also very interesting again. When you begin to check out in history again and you find Buddha, which is supposed to be an oriental god, Buddha, if you would. Buddha means Buddha. It's a hell. Hell the black. Buddha is woolly-haired. You've never seen a straight-haired Buddha no matter where you went to. You all have the big hara, as they call it again. And it represents a black person meeting a religion. When you begin to look amongst what would be called uh, the Japanese, they have Zahira. Zahira and Fuhai, which are sometimes interchanged, are both black ancient gods of the people now who worship there, if you would. When you begin to look at Scandinavia, because people say again, well, in Scandinavia you can't get anything there, you have King Tyre, or the god Tyre, T-Y-R, always shown as pug-nosed, big-lipped, big-eyed, looking what we now connotate as being Negroid. 
And this is in Scandinavia, but you never see this again. When you go down to Mexico and you go down to some of the uh, areas there in the, uh, you might have called it in the south of our border again, you have Quetzalcoatl and Extilton. Extilton and Quetzalcoatl always were shown as being dark with feathers showing wing flight. Either they had feathers at the headdress, around their waist. Extilton just was shown as just a black person, period. These are two of the Mexican and South American gods, all of them, both of them, being black. Now, that sums it up for this video. What do you guys think? Share thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Let's have a proper discussion about this without having me impose my opinions and ideas on this matter. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it so that the YouTube algorithm can know that this video was so much interesting and share it far wide to more avid viewers just like you. Subscribe and click the notification bell if this is your first time watching these videos and so that you can be notified as soon as we make a new upload on videos just like this. My name is Louis. Until next time, peace out.